All right, what's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode where we're going to follow up from last time where we started to build our health and armor system or shield or however you want to uh, consider a second health bar because all health bars and those things are just data values, right? They're usually 1 to 100 or uh, 1 through 20 and you go by 2s or something or whatever, you know. It's all some form of just numbers that count down. Um, and so they're arbitrary. It's just whatever whatever order you want them to be in, whatever you want them to do. For, heck, these could be money. These could be anything. So we want them to be health and, uh, and armor. So now we want to be able to display that damage or, or display damage being dealt to us and take damage and also see that reflected in a number. And at some point I might do a bar as well. But we'll, we'll just reflect it with a number very straightforward for right now. Okay, so let's get into that real quick by opening our player, which I usually do through the world settings. Just hit the magnifying glass to find your current uh, player. And then I'm going to go to a new area. I really need to start labeling some stuff. We'll, we'll do an organization video at some point here. And I'm going to do event any damage. So that anytime we take damage, which this is actually a built-in network feature. This isn't an event you have to build or some setting that you normally at least have to turn on unless you've disabled it for some reason. Uh, you know, this this is something that's just built in a damage system to where you can just send that function, send that signal, and it's already replicated if you want to include that into a multiplayer system. So it's really, it's really, um, really nice. So we're just going to use this event any damage, which means any kind of damage that we receive. Because there are different types of damage events. Uh, there's point and radial damage, and I think you can make up your own as well. But regardless, we're going to do a few things after this, and it's actually a pretty simple system. So we need to make some variables here. First, I'm going to make one called current health. And then make that an integer. And then make max health I can spell keep that as an integer current armor or shield you can do shield or whatever kind of stat you want to have be like a second thing you know and then max <laughs> I almost said shield um so w this is really the base of our system. We need to know how much health we currently have and how much health we can have. Same for the armor, shield, uh, protection, second health bar. First we want to get a branch here. And then off of this we're going to get... Well, actually, let's get our, our variable first. We need to check our armor. We need to see if we have any armor left. So we need... it to see if it's not equal to zero. If it is not equal to zero, which means it's more than zero, um, then we will do another branch here. And we'll, we'll go off with that in a second. If it is, we'll also do another branch here. <laughs> so we'll go off with that in a second as well. So if our first uh, question in, is true, then it means we have armor because it's saying it's more than zero, which means we have a value there, which means we have armor. So what we need to see oh, is if our armor is more than uh, the damage we're receiving. And yes, you can deal damage as a float, and uh, if you need to be that precise, you can make all of these variables I'm doing as integers, you can make them floats. Um, and that's probably better for certain things if you really have like random values and fractions and stuff uh, for for damage values. But if you know you're dealing with whole numbers, then you know integers are just fine. So if we of course have enough uh, armor, more armor than the damage, then we want to take a hit from our armor, right? So let's set current armor. to be current armor minus the damage, right? And then if it's not, uh, of course, enough, then we will just set our armor to zero. We don't need negative values. Here, let me just duplicate this. Set our armor to zero. 
and after that we're going to branch again and address what our what happens to our health now when we don't have enough armor here we will want to just drag this to the last branch where we talk about our health as well so in this condition we need to get our current health Then we need to actually get the value of our damage subtracted from our armor, funnily enough. Uh, you might wonder why we're actually doing this. The way we're going to subtract our health, uh, we want to measure the armor that we've, uh, the damage that the armor has taken because we're just taking straight from this damage value. Uh, and of course, if our armor is zero, it's not gonna go negative. Uh, and we'll just not subtract anything and the health will get the full blunt of the damage value. If it's false, we die. If it's true, we need to set current health to current health minus whatever this is going to be. Uh, and that's really it. So one thing that you can do if you want to set a limit on the health is you can have a constant function running uh, to max out the health and armor uh, or to stop the health and armor from going past a, a cap. Um, and I can show you how to do that in a later video as well, but I just put those variables there because you could use them and it's just to kind of give you that idea that you can really use variables very freely um, to man manipulate everything how, how you want. Sometimes you have to. Um, so we currently don't have anything in our world that's going to deal damage to us. And no, I sadly am not about to reveal that I'm doing an AI episode, although I really need to work on that again. Uh, no, we're actually just going to deal damage to ourselves. We're going to get the K key, uh, if possible, here. K because whatever. Uh, kill, I guess. I don't know. And we're going to apply damage. Um, and the damage actor is going to be ourselves. It's um, it's the fun uh, emo stuff. Uh, anyways deal however much damage you want to yourself 25 a couple a couple hits uh, and then set your current health and current armor um, so let's compile real Q and then uh, health we'll do 50 and armor we'll do 75 all right current uh, and then the max you can uh, set that but it's not going to influence us right now so if we apply it's not even set up that's a great point, isn't it? So let's set that up real quick. We need to go into our UI, open up our HUD, and then click on our text block, and we're going to bind this to a property, which is really nice current health there and the way you just do that is click on the text block hit text bind go down to the player that we have and hit current armor so for the armor and current health for the health so if you don't have that player thing uh there like i do uh you may not have watched the previous tutorials and that's fine i've got other tutorials where we've built uh multiple systems of picking up items and firing and aim down sights and just some some small stuff uh, but we also set up uh, some a little bit of UI and here we have a way to directly interface with our player and use its variables and vice versa it's really nice on event construct we just have a brand new variable that we create which I just made the variable uh, a player uh, player character um, and then set that variable based on the owner of the pawn where when I create this uh, construct this UI widget in my player I set the player itself as the owner so after that we just promote it to a variable that I can use so now that it's a variable on this uh, blueprint and it should be valid at all times because the player itself is creating the UI 
uh, you can interface with the properties and, and different even properties of you know objects and, and different stuff it's it's really it's really actually awesome so we're just using that to to easily get get it to set what the property is at all times so if we hit play now did it on my other screen but we should see some data values up there so let's hit k that looks right all right hit k again again nice and we're dead we dead so of course you can put destroy actor there let's uh let's do that here we're just gonna say destroy actor self suicide mission let's go kkk oh my game froze oh well okay well i can't uh, i can shift f1 and get out of it i can't do anything okay that's cool well uh that's how you do a little bit of damage and uh you know display ways to even take it um and and stuff like that so you, we can make this a bar you could make the uh, let's see i think what is it i'm not going to fully do it here but just kind of illustrate yeah you can do a little progress bar uh, here and um, bind the percentage to oh it'd have to be a float I think you'd have to make it a float because uh, percentages are float yeah you could you could bind the um, yeah yeah I can't do that I mean I could bind it to like walking speed I should be able to influence oh, no, I can't it doesn't matter but you could just do that and uh, actually make these variables floats and then you should be able to bind it to a progress bar pretty easily i might do that in a future episode just to demonstrate it well either way thank you so much for watching the tutorial series if you liked uh please do that and uh, subscribe and tell people about it if they're trying to learn how to make games uh it's pretty straightforward it just takes some time and patience and you know learning uh learning stuff on the fly so uh watch my other videos if you haven't already link in the description and thanks for stopping by. Have a good one.